Yeah. All right. We are we are recording. Oh. Hey. Hi. I'm not gonna lie. This, this is a really bad podcast. You're like, you're supposed to be like, hey guys, blah blah, blah. intro intro, child care child care intro intro intro, and today our special guest is, and then I'd be like, oh hey guys. <laughs> You just came on as the first in-person guest and immediately said that the podcast is bad. I didn't say the podcast is bad. You said, you, said you literally really just said, this is a really bad podcast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. I'm sorry. We can start over. <laughs> we don't have to start over. But yes, welcome back everyone to Child Care Sights and Sounds. I am Danny, and Gigi is not here today. It was her birthday. As you might remember from the last episode, we were brunching for her birthday. And um, we went out last night. We had a time last night. <laughs> for real. Um, so, yeah, everybody had a time last night. Yeah, she is recovering. <laughs> but in the meantime, and in between time, I have my cousin here. Hi. This is Lauren Christie. Mm-hmm. And Lauren is, I would say, pivotal in my growth within the childcare industry. Oh, that's so sweet. Do you feel that way? I, I really don't. Do you <laughs> think about that? I like, think that I was a great help, definitely, during the time that you needed it. And you honestly helped me, too. Um, I think we were both assets to each other during that time because I was also pivoting in my life. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. Well, let's not get ahead. Because <laughs> I do want you to talk about that. Okay. So why don't we start with, yes, you're my cousin. So I know a lot about you already. But mm-hmm. for everybody that does not know, why don't you tell them a little about yourself that you'd like to share? Well, I wasn't prepared. Um, <laughs> what, what, are, what did you think we were talking about today? I don't know. You're the guest. I don't, I don't know. Like, you would ask me questions. I'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not like a professional professional, but hi, I'm Lauren. Um, you want to say my age? Like, you, you can say whatever you oh, want. Okay, I'm I'm 28 in New York. <laughs> <laughs> this is my first my first podcast, honestly. Um, and I'm Danny's cousin, like she said. I um, helped her out in 2017 with her uh, in home childcare business. And now I am currently working in Department of Social Services. Okay. Yeah. What about before that? Oh, before that. What? If, yeah. Let. Who are? Who is Lauren? Who's Lauren? Lauren is boring. <laughs> Lauren is um, not. Boring. I'm not boring. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, thank you for that. Um, I was born in New York. We were both born in. New York. Can I say the place, or do you not want people like? You can say where we were, where oh, okay. we were born. Yeah. Okay. Sure. I'm pretty sure I've said it. Oh, okay. Yeah, we were born in Mount Vernon, New York. Um, a lot of my friends from Mount Vernon say it is very fortunate that we are still alive. We were born in Mount Vernon, New York, that hospital, because it's no longer a hospital, uh, but it's still there, but it's not a hospital. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> um. But when I was 10, so like in, I think 2009, 2010, I moved to Georgia. Um, I've always loved kids. And so did Danny, actually. She always said she wanted to be a teacher. And I wasn't sure, like, how that would be. But I always enjoyed, like, teaching kids, too. But I wasn't like like Danny. Like, Danny would literally, like, make tests and stuff for us. And we would play (laughs) school. And I do remember that. (laughs) I, I wasn't, like, at that point. But I'm... I definitely did want to teach and in high school in my high school in Georgia I was still in Georgia at this time um, we had this program honestly like I'm really proud I feel like that's a very innovative or just not innovative but just like very forward-thinking um, to have like different elective classes and one of them was for teaching so in high school, I did like a teaching um, class for like two years, so my junior and senior year. Um, and that kind of started it up. And then when I went to college, I also was about to like be a teacher. 
and then I was like, you know, this is not it. This is not, I'm not trying to be <laughs> overworked and underpaid because honestly, in high school I was student teaching and then in college I also was student teaching. And in Georgia, the cost of living is very different. So <laughs> I wasn't trying to do that. And also I think they only get paid like at the end of the month, once a month. And I was like, I'm not about this struggle life. So, you know, at that time, 2017, I was just like struggling with college classes and Danielle was like, oh, I'm doing this. Do you want to come up to New York and do this? And this is a home daycare. At the time I was running a home daycare um, in my house in Queens in 2017. Well, I started in 2014. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why is he looking <laughs> You might hear or see interruptions from my dog in this episode because he's locked in this room with us. He needs to behave. I mean, sometimes he's a good boy, sometimes he's not. Sometimes he is a good boy and sometimes he's not is correct. <laughs> so, it was 2017 when you came? Mm -hmm. It wasn't 2016? I'm pretty sure. Because you were with started... me in the first house. You were with me in the first house for like a year, no? I had two home daycares. I had well, I had one home daycare, and it moved to a second house. Oh, eventually, Ugh. what? Nice. Just just the whole like back and forth, and then like I know the parents definitely were confused like in the end too. But I think I was definitely back and forth because I did come up even before then while I was still in college. I think like on breaks, and I was helping you out like at the first daycare when you were like the primary one, and then. I don't know if it was like, oh, you're trying to just expand and you're like, would you like to help me like operate this daycare? And I was like, this is perfect because this is the change of pace that I'm looking for because even though I enjoy kids and stuff. Weren't you, were you coming to New York anyway? Like, or was this a, I think I remember talking to your mom first. She was planning on coming to New York anyways. Right. And she was, you came after we had already started the process of opening the center, right? Because I remember talking to your mom about you coming to help me while she was in my center helping me clean. Her and my mom came over to no. the center to help me clean some clean Literally up. Literally just before, my mom was like, oh my God, I want to do this because working in Georgia is not it either. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, she was definitely going to come up and then she also... At that time afterwards she had gotten a call back from New York so the short story is my mom used to work on um, Department of Social Services that's kind of also how I um, you know got into it um, she worked in Department of Social Services in New York and then we moved and we worked in Georgia the difference between New York and Georgia social services is that New York is unionized and Georgia is not so she technically wasn't in the system of social services anymore because she was in Georgia even though she was working social services um, the pay rate is significantly different significantly like um, my entry-level position here in New York I was making more than she was as a supervisor in Georgia and that's why she was like this is this is not the vibe for my for me and my family so she was moving to New York and she was like you know I just need something to get back into New York so that I can you know start finding jobs to help support my family and um, then she got the call back and then I was like, oh, I don't mind helping because I was like, you know, I don't need to be down here working a job, student teaching and going to college. I was stressed, man. I was stressed. I was really stressed because also when I came up here, like it was affecting things still. Like I had that stress eczema breakout that was all over my body. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. All right. So in 2017, then I think I think it was 2016. I think it did start in 2016, like towards the end of 2016, yeah. and then 2017 was when I permanently moved because yeah. I remember in January, like I was back and forth, and then in 2017, um, in January is when I like officially moved like in. moved permanently yeah so you moved into she moved into my house um that i was running the home daycare out of in the first location and um helped me with the child care of the kids that were in that home on-site provider yeah well not first not at first oh yeah true not first yeah so at first um while i was still getting my center started because my 
center location opened in March of 2017. So mm. actually in two weeks, it'll be six years of operation. Um, Congratulations. I know, time flies. Thank it you. Does. But so that started in March of 2017. Um, but the months leading up to that, of course, I needed uh, help because I was trying to operate um, start up the center, but also operate my home daycare. So you came on as an assistant and started mm-hmm. helping there along with the other assistants that we had at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and then about a year later... I don't think it was a year later. I feel like it was honestly a couple halfway. Months. Yeah, halfway. In New York, you cannot be a director or on-site provider on a license at multiple Places. So if you own a home daycare, you're technically what they call an on-site provider, which is basically like the director of a home daycare or um, the manager, whatever you might call it in your state. But you can't have your name on multiple licenses as a director or on-site provider. So at the time, I was the on-site provider of my home daycare trying to start up a center and be the director of the center, and that wasn't going to work out. I think at first I had listed an employee as my center director for the first few months, um, and then... Were you open then? Huh? I don't think you were open the first few months then. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we were licensed. Oh. We were licensed, but uh, we didn't have kids to start off with. Okay. okay. Um, but yeah, so my employee was my center director at first, and then in uh, a few months into that, when we started to get more busy, I wanted to switch it to be me as a center director, which meant I had to get off the license, and then in comes Lauren. <laughs> so Lauren, uh, so graciously took on being the on-site provider of the home daycare Mm -hmm. and then in the midst of all of that happening (laughs) we had to move yeah um do you remember that yes like why and how oh yeah um so the owner of the house that we were renting from she passed away (laughs) and the was it who was it the agent or the yeah, something like the owner of the house had passed away a while before that, apparently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, the property manager, I oh, guess, okay. is a, it was a real estate agent agency, but I think they were acting as her property manager, I guess. that We paid, we had always paid our rent to, to this agency mm-hmm. um, for the years that I was living in that house. And mm, it turned out that they were not paying the mortgage and so what yeah. is the, it went into it went foreclosure. into foreclosure the house and it was going to be auctioned off and we we're like oh. i went to the auction and everything <laughs> oh my god i didn't even know oh, oh you yeah, didn't I know do, i do remember that i do remember yeah that. I, went, I didn't go with you but i do remember that yeah i went to the auction and i don't think they even if i remember correctly i don't think they even like it was basically like them reading off addresses like a list of addresses and people like bidding on mm-hmm. those addresses and i don't think i uh, heard my address come no, up no i don't think that they did it because i think later the children found out about it um i mean i know that's who what eventually yeah, yeah i don't want to get into all like, of that owned it, but we were just like oh okay what were you paying rent for right and i don't even remember the excuse of like i don't even remember the excuse of what happened uh or why Why they were but it is what it is so as soon as i got that notice i was like can't be here anymore i don't know what's gonna (laughs) happen it took me maybe honestly it felt like forever back then but when i really think about it it was only like a couple weeks it really was that we we found uh another house that was suitable and and in the same neighborhood and walking distance pretty much um found another house moved all of our stuff into that house and moved our program over to that house and lauren became the on-site provider and helped with like making sure that we could still survive and pay our bills at home while she was operating trying to trying to invest and start up this this center based location, mm-hmm. so all of that is why I'm saying like it wouldn't have been possible without you because mm-hmm. I wouldn't have been able to 
I wouldn't have been able to manage both. Like I, yeah. for those of you that are watching this or listening to this and have, you know, a home daycare and yeah. a center mm-hmm. and you did it by yourself, like that's amazing. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure how you did that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sure it comes with challenges. And this is me as someone that operates multiple centers now, but for some reason the home daycare experience is is different, I would say. It's it's definitely um you would need to be more hands on um and I think that's what a lot of the ho- p- parents that are looking for home daycares want. Like yeah, they want that, that smaller, close more close, setting. intimate environment, like with the actual owner of the program providing the direct care mm-hmm. um, versus in a center. It's things are just easier to delegate and and mm-hmm. a f- a flow in a center versus a home daycare. So mm-hmm. I thank you for that. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, it was fun. I was it fun? It. That yeah, was going to be my next it. question. Like, <laughs> what was your experience? Because I feel like you kind of liked it some days and most days hated it. Honestly, the, <laughs> the reason why I hated it is because, like, I am... I love kids and my priority is always going to be kids. And I, at the time, definitely did not... Um, know when to stop because I will just keep going from like 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. I'll just keep going 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 because like my priority is the kids um so I'd run out of energy and honestly what I did not like was just feeling a little bit isolated because you were kind of gone um and then like we were far from my mom and our family is back and was back in Westchester and then I didn't drive and I was just like man but then also it's just like being around um, kids. Like as much as I love it, you do need like that kind of adult interaction um, regularly. Yeah. So, so you, you started to feel lonely. Yeah, just a bit. And then I also wanted to finish my degree because I was like, I don't know what I want to do this long term. I want to like do something of my own. But I mean, I did love it. And even now I miss the kids. <laughs> mm. um, but I did start to feel, I mean, when you were home, it wasn't lonely and you definitely would make sure that we would go out and we would do stuff and be like entertaining. But I mean, I'm pretty sure you were exhausted too. Like mm-hmm. it was exhausting. You were also like getting a master's at the time too. Mm-hmm. Like oh, having a center, making sure ours is up and running. Like you were very thorough with so much stuff for mm-hmm. the home daycare as well as the center on top of getting your master's. like wonder woman over here <laughs> Thank you. um but yeah it was a lot and i think also just you getting your master's i was like man i didn't finish my degree i want to finish my degree um and i still just didn't want i didn't know what i wanted to do i just really and then you so you went back to school yeah and so <laughs> when did you start school was it while you were still at the house with me or mm-hmm. after you moved it was while i, I, was I after... remember i took you to the college but i don't remember that you signed up that day oh okay so i was gonna start college in queens and then i can't remember what happened but i wasn't able to do that so um i found that there was a suny in westchester i'm like so <laughs> I, I didn't know it was a SUNY in Westchester. I didn't know it was a SUNY college. Um, so that is what I decided to go to. Instead of a CUNY school, I went to a SUNY. Um, SUNY and CUNY is State University of New York or City University of New York. Mm-hmm. So it's the state schools mm-hmm. like where, you know, I, I don't know if other states have this. Where, where you could go to school. You could go to a state. Because it's like public like a, school, kind of. Yeah, it's like a public public university so you can go there for much lower cost if Mm -hmm. you live in state versus out of Mm -hmm. state so SUNY and CUNY that's what that is yeah I think Georgia has something similar I can't remember what it was called but they do have something similar to that um in terms of like funding and scholarships and stuff so cost was definitely a thing too since like I was working with Danielle but like most of the honestly too like whatever I was getting paid was going back into the daycare that was one thing too yeah that was both of like there was no money to be there was there was no at that time because every money all all of our money was going back into just living the living expenses of the house or the daycare or the center Mm -hmm. that's pretty much it and not just that because like i said like i just 100 percent on the kids like even if i had like a little bit to spare i would end up like getting so much things for the kids but they enjoyed it it 
it was fun. It was great. I just had no money. <laughs> um, but it was, it was, it was a good time. I do miss it. I'm not gonna lie. I miss living with you. <laughs> um, I do miss living with you because you definitely um, motivated me and pushed me. Um, but then, like after, I think 2018, 2019. Yeah, 2018. The end of 2018. Um, was it my no? Because my grandma passed before I moved here. Honestly, I think that was also one of the pivotal moments. Like, unfortunately, there's just like a lot of um, people that have passed away in my life. Um, in 2017, well, 2016 was my grandmother, and I think that was like one of the pivotal changes for me. Like, I don't know what I'm doing with my life, and then for this opportunity to come up, and then in 2018, uh, my godfather's mother had passed away. She was like another grandmother to me. And so I was like, all right, well, I don't know. Like, I feel like this is kind of a pattern um, at this time. And I went to Jamaica and then I also signed up for, <laughs> I went to Jamaica for the funeral, sorry. Mm -hmm. And then I um, also signed up for classes at that time. So it was honestly like the later half of 2018 when I started to do like this pivotal movement. And I also applied for uh, a civil service exam to work in the county of Westchester as um just someone in the Department of Social Services. So I did multiple things and they rejected me for a while because I didn't have my degree yet at that time. Uh, but I did get accepted into the college and I also, in 2019, literally like in January 2019, um, I got accepted to work in social services and I'm here now still. <laughs> So, um, in 2018, I think it was, it was when we closed the home daycare. Yeah. I don't remember if that was before or after you left, or if it was at the same time. It was around the same time because I was, like, back and forth. And then also, they were saying, oh, was it a, oh my god, a form of aggress? Is that, what is it? It's like when there's a blockage. Yeah, so we... I think I might have told this story either on the podcast or in other like videos I've put out. By the way, if you're listening to this audio only, the video replay of it is going to be on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Jenny Christine. Um, so you can see Check it out. Lauren's face. <laughs> um, but uh, back in 20. 18 so after we moved from the first house to the second house mm -hmm. we had to find a place obviously that was suitable for daycare the first house we lucked out or i at that time as i was also i lucked out with finding a place that was advertised as a good place to have a home daycare because there was one there before actually there were two there before me um so when i found it it was already like i knew that it was going to work the second house that we had to move into was not a home daycare before so i had to make sure that it was going to like pass be licensed inspection. pass inspections before um signing the lease for it mm -hmm. and uh part of the problem of that house and the last and the first one to also was that it's it was in a connected like townhouse type of situation mm -hmm. where the houses were all connected and we were in the middle of that mm -hmm. so we did not have uh egress which is an emergency exit from the backyard to the street or uh, so like if we, we have to multiple exits. you have to have multiple forms of egress and typically in a house that's a front door and a back door or a front door and a side door and it sh needs to lead to the street so when you're living in the city one of the five boroughs in queens um in a house like that typically you do have a backyard but it's fenced in and you cannot get to the street so we had to ask our neighbors mm -hmm. i don't know if you remember but when we I, I don't even know if you were with me but we went and knocked on the neighbor mm -hmm. behind us to ask her if she could if like we move her stuff no we i went before even signing the lease i knocked on the neighbor's door behind us because i was trying to ask if oh, we right. could put a, f a gate in her fence so that we could leave <laughs> through her fence through her yeah through her fence to get to the street in case of an emergency and i don't think she said no but sh she i don't 
or I don't even know. I think that um, I don't think she was there. I do remember. Yeah, that I was like, I don't, I don't even think remember. She was there, and I think that we didn't get like get to ask her. Much but of a the, to the owner, right? But the neighbor to the right of us um, also had street access from his yard, so we asked him, and he said yes. I honestly don't think he cared about anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, not in a bad way. Like he mowed our lawn sometimes he mowed our lawn sometimes but i as far as like the property like i don't think he cared about the backyard because his backyard was full of junk Mm -hmm. and that is where the problem lies so we he allowed us to put a gate in his fence which was fantastic it helped us to pass licensing however he blocked the gate with a lot of with a car a junk car a lot of garbage a lot of stuff so I mean, first a pass inspection though he did move that stuff initially yeah he had moved it and it wasn't messy for like a long time and then like towards eventually the end, he just has like, stuff back and right. it blocked the gate and um i don't know i don't remember if we could get in contact with him or get him to move the stuff but even like parents were like what we just moved like what you can't ask him to move this stuff i don't remember why or you know why it couldn't move but they're like, all right, well, this is not. So an inspector so. came back. Oh yeah, an inspector came <laughs> we back. We had like, an inspection, times. of course, like with daycare, we have regular inspections. So one day we had an, and we've had inspections since opening and mm-hmm. since this issue was there, mm-hmm. and nobody had ever said anything up until this last time that we had an inspection at that house, mm-hmm. somewhere in 2018, I want to say. Mm-hmm. And when they came, uh, they took a look in the backyard and saw that the egress was blocked, and they said that that was a big issue, mm-hmm. and they uh, tried to, um, they were basically going to force us to close if we didn't move the stuff or have mm-hmm. this stuff be moved mm-hmm. and at that point i had already started lauren was already thinking about like moving to westchester and mm-hmm. i was thinking about just closing the daycare anyway because now my center was um you know going smoothly we had a decent amount of kids and i no longer needed to have the uh, responsibility or the stress that comes mm-hmm. with also having a home daycare. So it kind of was just like, all right, well, this is a good reason to just tell parents that we can't do this anymore because the the city is forcing it, forcing I mean, it, and it's out of our we, control. We really couldn't, though, because it was out of our control. It was out of our control, but we also really didn't try. I, I don't know. I feel like I... You like asked the guy to move him? Yeah, I didn't ask them, and like even um, one of the parents were like, oh, well, maybe we can get somebody else to like come in. And then she looked, and she's like, nope. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. I didn't know you were asking the parents for help. No, I wasn't asking the parents for help. I was telling them, like, the reason why we're going to close is because, like, this stuff is back, and, you know, he doesn't want to move this stuff again. And, um... So, wait, so we asked him, and he said no? I don't think you asked him. I think, like, I was like, can you move this again? And he's just like, mm. no. Like, eh, okay. Like, kind of... Yeah, he's probably outside. like, girl, I help you guys so much. I mow your lawn. I put a gate in my fence. I did this and that. Please leave me alone. But anyway, yeah, it just, it ended up working out. That was a sign for me that like, okay, it's time to let this go. This is great while it lasted. Yeah. And it's not like we just like dropped. And we had so many problems in that house. Okay. Not well, even. <laughs> besides for like, the, like we did pass inspection for like everything. It was safe and fine for the kids. It's just the living space was. The yeah. Best. The great, the great thing about that house was that the daycare was in the basement level or the ground level, whatever mm-hmm. you would call it. it. It was kind of like, I guess, set up from the uh outside wise it kind of looked like a two-family home because there was a front door for the bottom level and a front like you could walk up a flight of stairs on the outside and get to a front door for the top level Mm -hmm. and the top level was uh an entrance to the living room kitchen two bedrooms a bathroom and the bottom level was what i again i don't know if it's classified as a basement or just the first floor ground level just Mm -hmm. because of the way it was set up Mm -hmm. but that first floor you open the front door and it's just a nice open space and then like a room that i guess could be an office it's not technically a bedroom because there's no closet 
So it was it was a big open mm-hmm. area that I get two big open areas mm-hmm. what, that could be like if you wanted to finish it out. I guess it could be like a, a kitchen, kitchen dining, dining living yeah. room area, and then in the back of that first floor was mm-hmm. a room mm-hmm. without a closet that I guess could be an office space or mm-hmm. a bedroom without a closet, and, and then there was, was a, a full bathroom. bathroom. Yeah, so it was it was a perfect setup for a home daycare. Whereas the first house, I had to have the home daycare on the daycare space. I mean, in my living room, <laughs> so there was no like, like living room. Yeah. yeah. So in this second house, it was great because there was a separation, separate entrance. separate entrance. Right. It felt like it felt like you were leaving work. Mm -hmm. you know, to go back upstairs, to go into your house. Like, Mm -hmm. I really loved that. Um, Mm -hmm. But the house itself, like, had flooding problems all the time. I think, yeah, definitely. It would honestly be a godsend when the floods would happen. It would be definitely not when the kids were there, thankfully. Yes, And I think also... But one time it was so bad, I think we had to close for a day or two because it, it was a... The city pipe, like they had to break the ground they, outside. No, they told us to close it because um, the city was going to open it up. So they, it didn't flood at that time until like after they broke the line. That's when it flooded. So yeah, we were like kind of prepared for that already. And I think also it was a godsend too because I do remember like literally after when we were like, all right, we're not going to, you know, have the daycare here anymore. Um, the owner was going to sell it. When she was showing the house, it was like the worst flooding ever. Oh yeah, that uh, that is what I was talking about. I guess it was, so. It was after the daycare it was after closed. the daycare closed. It was the yeah worst the day flooding. we were moving out. <laughs> the worst. I was like, I'm so glad we do not have to deal with this. Yes. <laughs> um, and then I also made the decision to move to Philadelphia mm-hmm. back that around that time, like mm-hmm. a few months, a few months after we closed. I made the decision, and then a few months later. I actually moved um and I ended up uh, like thankfully they let me out of that lease early after Mm -hmm. there was a shooting (laughs) that's why you didn't know I remember the shooting but I didn't know that's why like they let you out of the lease yeah I was like I don't feel safe here I have Mm -hmm. to leave there was a shooting like right right outside my window I could see it from my bedroom window if I was looking out there I could have seen it happen it was a drive-by shooting of this guy sitting in his car it's it's a sad story I don't know what happened but I I didn't didn't want to be there to find out what happened according to the neighbors it's that that only happens if they like they know you and they're holding the grudge so it's yeah it was definitely targeted yeah but Mm. I had never been around anything like that before, and I, I immediately called my dad. I was like, I'm coming over, and I'm, I never went. I did not go back. I went back, I think, the next day or a couple of days later to start packing my stuff, mm-hmm. but I recontacted the landlord, and I was like, my lease is about to end soon. You're thinking about selling the house. Like, can you please... Like, let me just yeah, go. He wanted to sell the house because it was a lot of problems. Like, to be And the pipes. Landlord. Not just the pipes, just like the Oh, yeah, boiler. we were calling him a lot. Yeah. Because <laughs> there were issues. Yeah, like, I forgot about all uncle, of everything. I know, just honestly, like, the funniest one was, like, when he called his uncle, and his uncle was like, they put the wrong size boiler in here. That's why I was oh, making yes. all this noise. And I was like, yes. well, why didn't you help him in the beginning? <laughs> um... So yeah, that that was an experience. The radiator sounded like gunshots too. <laughs> it was always clicking, literally spitting out water from oh the radiator God. every because every the day. It was too big for the space and too little waters. <laughs> click 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 click. <laughs> it's like, it yeah. was just a lot. It was too much, <sighs> but. What an experience. Anyway, back to you. <laughs> you um, you mentioned that you went to, you decided to go to a SUNY school in, in Westchester, which mm-hmm. is great. What did you study? Um, I just studied um, social sciences, um, social science and sociology. And I enjoy that too. I think that was also it. Is that I enjoy like other multiple. Municipalities? I don't know. <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you trying I to say? It's like multiple disciplines and stuff like that. I, I under I enjoy um, 
multiple disciplines and stuff so not just like childcare, but i also enjoy like sociology and why humans do the things that they do and you know cause and effect and um i enjoyed it there actually so i feel like i was just really fortunate in all the schools that i went to um in georgia and here in new york um to learn like really quality things like it wasn't just like oh you're here for your degree you know just do the work blah 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 it was like we are trying to be the best we're trying to make sure that you're the best and i think especially in georgia and that's kind of what it like <laughs> what kind of stressed me out is because they were definitely so there's something called ed tpa i don't know if like did you ever take it i never compl i started it and i never completed it i was like i'm not doing this yeah that was also <laughs> one thing i was like i'm i'm not doing but i TPA. also was i had already started my home daycare by then so i knew that i wasn't going to be, a, be teacher. a teacher so in order to be a teacher you have to pass this thing called ed tpa so on top of your degree and everything you have to do this ed tpa it's like a whole bunch of hours that you have to do you have to record yourself pay less money blah 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 and then if you don't pass it it's, it's putting together a portfolio oh, of. i mean we are in a child care industry at talking on a podcast so people might be interested if you want to be a teacher in new york state and specifically to like teach in a public school setting you will likely unless rules have changed because i had found out when i got to st john's um that year or the year before was the first year they introduced the mandate yeah, to, no, uh, definitely. to do ed TPA. Yeah, so maybe mandated, something has changed. They mandated it and I think like in 2018 they were changing some rules because I don't know if enough people were passing it. Yeah, so it's a portfolio that you put together. Typically if you go to a good school, the, the school like counselor or the school of education is going to help you through this oh, yeah, process. Absolutely. Where you're putting together a portfolio of your work um, electronically and I think most of it comes from your student teaching experience that I remember I had to collect I say for years I told myself I was gonna finish my NCPA and I saved all of the like uh, exams and like student projects and samples of work that I did during my student teaching I saved it I'm like I'm gonna I'm gonna put this together one day I'm, I never did it but so you put together your like proof of the work you've done with your students yes you record your I remember doing that you record yourself in the classroom with kids during student teaching for um hours. Yeah, and then and that's on top of you have to take like three or four exams yeah. that you pay for study uh -huh, for, and if uh -huh, you don't pass, uh -huh. you have to do Start it again. All over. Um, so the exams plus the Ed TPA, I didn't pass all the exams. I did not even attempt to submit the Ed TPA though. So you're saying that's what turned you away from uh, definitely teaching. One of the reasons, too, aside from, like, the low pay rate in Georgia, getting paid once a month and wanting more for my life. But also, like like I said, like, my grandmother had also had passed away. So on top of, like, the stress of that, student teaching and also helping my mom. Like, I was working part-time and they were like, oh, you really shouldn't be working part-time. You need to be school full-time full and then you're going to be your student teaching. I'm like, I got bills. I got to help my mom pay these bills. If I don't help her pay these bills, then I got to Where were you live. working part-time? At Taco Bell. Where? In New York? In Georgia. Oh, this was when you were in school. Yeah. Um, in Georgia. Yeah. Okay, okay. In Georgia. So I was going to school. I was student teaching. And then afterwards, I was working at Taco Bell. And it was very stressful. Like, because I'd be on my feet all day. And mm -hmm. teaching and then I'd be on my feet all day in Taco Bell Ugh. so in what was your major in New in York? Georgia in New York in New York it was just um social sciences social sciences okay. but in Georgia it was education but then like you know honestly I was on my third year and I did take a break like coming to New York so it was great I was on my third year no I was on my fourth year I was on my fourth year in education, and I think that's why I kind of felt stuck in mm -hmm. it because, like, I was literally on my fourth year um, in education. I was about to graduate, but um, on top of like all the pressure and then going through like a bit of a depression and anxiety because, like, my grandmother had passed, and that'd be like the third person within like a few years span. Mm -hmm. um, it was just a lot, it was just a lot, and 
but I just I just felt like because we invested like all this money like I took out these loans I did my um, you know all this stuff I was like I just feel kind of stuck and I just want a different change I don't want to like go to school here and maybe start all over but then I, I just didn't know what my other options were but yeah mm -hmm. okay so with your um doing social sciences in New York did you know that you wanted like you went into school in that degree because you knew you wanted to work for DSS no I did that because it was one of the more um, easier ones that I could do to complete my degree so I didn't have to start like over I think it only took me a year yeah, oh you just wanted to, to do something to finish and get finish your degree. My degree yeah which so, you did. <laughs> and I did. I did. I did uh, in 2019. What year did you got? 2019, yeah. yeah. Which is great. Yeah. And uh, have you thought about going back to school since? Mm -hmm. What do you want to study? I still don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Um, I mean, I do kind of know. Like, I enjoy psychology. And I also enjoy working with kids. And I enjoy, like... Um, trauma focused studies to just help kids because like there were certain things that you can kind of notice and recognize in our behaviors and it definitely impedes on their learning and growth mm -hmm. um, if you're not like aware of it like and then and then there's certain things that I learned too that are trauma like moving is traumatic <laughs> mm -hmm. and you don't really think of it like that like yeah, moving is. is traumatic for a kid yeah it's traumatic for adults it's traumatic for adults too <laughs> but like you just don't think of it like you think of it like oh my gosh it's a new space it's a new stuff so like even if it's just like one small move um it's it's traumatic yeah. um and it doesn't necessarily like mean like oh my god now I can't like I don't know <laughs> right but it, it is it's traumatic and I think that a lot of times a lot of the behaviors and patterns and things that we do are because of just certain small traumatic things that end up just building up and so I just found that very interesting and I would probably like to do that and I'll probably go back for my master's and something like that mm -hmm. otherwise I'll just you know try and strike it rich or you know find me a rich husband that'll work too oh my gosh no I'm not gonna post that <laughs> <laughs> I'm I will post your rich husband fantasies. Yes. So if there's any, um, you know, no, rich... no, we're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> we're not doing that. Oh my god. So um, do you, um, other than pay aside, because I know how you feel about your job right now, as far as <laughs> like you're not happy with the with the pay that you get. Hold on, because I do want to say that I am very grateful because I, with this job, even though it's considered an entry level position. I was able to, although that is kind of in part due to the pandemic, um, I was able to save enough for down payment on my co-op. So I am very grateful that, and I do think of that, and I do think yes. that it is a place. Lauren is a homeowner. I'm a homeowner, y'all. Um, <laughs> I do think that it's very important um, because, like, I know that I do complain a lot, but it is a lot of frustration and a lot of things that have changed, not necessarily for the better, especially since the pandemic. And um, it's just a lot of frustration on the workers' part as well as the clientele part. So I definitely, like, that's just what it is. But I am grateful that I do have a job that pays my bills because I was able to get a home and I needed a home. Ooh, Lord. But <laughs> Thank you for saying that because a lot of people don't know how to recognize that. Like, they complain about pay um, without acknowledging that well, one, they accepted the job for that pay, mm -hmm. and two, that it allows them to live, you know, the lifestyle that they live mm -hmm. and accomplish what they have accomplished. Mm -hmm. And yes, there's more to be earned and made mm -hmm. when you uh, pass certain thresholds. Absolutely. But pay aside, do you enjoy the work that you do? You can, well, you can be honest on here. I don't know if you want to be so, honest for yourself. So let's start with, I did not think that I would be in social services. I thought like I was going to stay here for five years and then move on to what I actually want to do. And I still don't really know 
what it is that I want to do. You don't enjoy social services or like you don't enjoy working for DSS in that account. Like well, you don't I'm enjoy guess, the... I guess I'm going to like go more into it like with this whole story because oh. like I said like my mindset was not to be here because I just didn't consider it a job that I want to stay in and want like an office desk job where I'm just sitting there because what I do is essentially like the call center and we go we went in the office to sit there and answer the phones eight hours a day that's not really fun or ideal like mm -hmm. the benefit though is that it was a unionized job so we had breaks and the people were there are fantastic so i will say that i i didn't hate my no i did mm -hmm. <laughs> i i didn't particularly like answering or being the front end um and you didn't like dealing on. with the like no, so I don't mind helping out people because that's the thing. I, When the pandemic happened and people were a little bit more sympathetic, especially to people who were actually going in and working, like they were more calm and more a little bit reasonable, I felt a sense of pride because I was like, oh my gosh, I know these resources and I'm doing my part to help these people because I know how difficult it is at the pandemic. And I want to make sure that these families who are going through this rough time can get everything that they need to survive this horrible thing because that's just my duty as a not just a civil servant servant but like as a human being so i absolutely felt a sense of pride but like when i had first started um like i said i wasn't planning on being there for long because we're the front end people so we were just getting all these mad and angry calls and it was hard not to take it personal because i just like started like people are always going to have issues people are always going to be angry and it's not about you but it just it was still hard just like eight hours a day sitting there listening to that and when you tell people certain things oh, they get mad at you and like still now um they get mad at me but i don't get like as angry as i used to because i know it's not about me and it's not my fault um but you know some people want what they want when they want it and it doesn't always work like that and so that was the frustration it was it's 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 more so just frustration of being the vented person and you know not feeling like you're treated like a human being while the other person is also feeling like oh i'm not being treated like a human being so i'm just gonna do this or just having this perception of everybody who works in social services or dss is mean and they act like there's their money and blah 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 that's not quite the case and um well, I will say mm -hmm. that I think that there are clients, the people that are calling in, um, which are people that are in need of whatever assistance it mm -hmm. is that DSS can provide. I'm sure that there are, I know that there are clients that can be aggressive and, you know, a negative tone, attitudes, mean, cursing, whatever. But... I will also say that as a child care provider that has a contract with DSS, there are workers that can also come off as mean or not, does not, they don't, it, it seems like they don't care about your problems or, and I, the reason I know this is because um, we have to call as child care providers, we have to call sometimes to ask questions about our payment or ask questions about a case for a family to see if they're still active or authorized or able to be in our care and things like that or to send paperwork. And sometimes you come across a worker that is just like, what crawled up your behind today? <laughs> um, and I assume that it must come from being or it might come from being like on their end treated disrespectfully by clients all day long mm -hmm. and if they come across one that's nice or normal or whatever that they don't know how to act recognize that or they they're they're i it find that some people are not matching energies like i think <laughs> it's okay to match energies if you come across a client that's cursing you out being rude disrespectful not that you should be unprofessional but i can understand being a little more stern with them or you know matching their energy in a way that doesn't cross boundaries or get you fired mm -hmm. but like if you come across a client that's like 
it's so nice speaking to you. How's your day? Like, could you please help me with this? And you're just like, where's the, you, you're missing the case number on this form. Like, just, it's just, why? Why have that sort of... I will say it is very draining and it, it is not an excuse. I try to be, not show my exasperation. Um, and a lot of times it's honestly not you. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's hard because I literally it's... had a caseworker tell me, she told Gigi that, <laughs> this was when Gigi first, like, in my first location, she became the the assistant director and she was helping me for the first time ever with, um, uh, I think, an authorization or something, calling DSS for something. And the worker told her, if you don't get me so-and-so, I'm putting this paper at the bottom of the pile. And and at that point, it had already been like weeks that we were waiting for this, whatever the situation was. We were waiting to speak to this worker for a long time about this issue. And Gigi didn't have something immediately on the phone when she asked the question. So she took that time to threaten her, abuse her power, basically, mm -hmm. which is crazy. So I'm not going to speak for like the other counties because this is Nassau County y'all are talking about. Yes. But I know specifically with my county, it is a lot of frustration. Some people do definitely abuse their powers um or they just take the frustration out on clients who are very well-meaning and it's not fair um but unfortunately there's a lot of things with the system honestly like the whole system itself is not fair but like you know if i get a different job and this is not gonna affect me i'll probably go like deeper <laughs> into it another time all right yeah because, we i don't want you no, to no, 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 no. <laughs> i mean it's not anything that it was just that there are certain beliefs that I know and hold that definitely hold true, especially coming from a sociology um, aspect, but then also working in it and seeing the cause and effect and understanding certain things. It's just, it, it's a little difficult. Um, but, you know, I think what the disconnect is that um, there's just a lack of communication, lack of understanding that humans are human. Um, I mean, I will say for my county, a lot of times we are definitely overworked. I'm not going to say we're underpaid because in Georgia they are definitely overworked and underpaid. Um, but unfortunately there was like not many options aside from like healthcare or fast food or mall work in Georgia. But here it's more so like, you know, they're a little bit overworked and one of the benefits are the benefits <laughs> and that's why there's a lot of families too that are um in it or even clientele there are people who used to be clientele uh previous workers who used to actually be clientele and i think that's also one of the things is that like the mentality of i pull myself up from my bootstraps why can't you like follow these simple instructions and a lot of times people just don't know so i think that's also my frustration because we're working at the call center we know how some of these workers are um it's a little frustrating when we tell people what is needed and instead of like you know being grateful especially because we try i definitely try to be as accessible as possible because i definitely understand being you know needing the help but not qualifying for the help because my mom worked <laughs> with social services um a lot of people are just very like oh why can't it be like this or why can't it be like that and because unfortunately it just doesn't work like that yeah it can get it's it's just frustrating all around i think yeah. there needs to be a revamp of the whole system oh, in absolutely. general absolutely and um i think that things are moving towards that kind of oh. <laughs> well, at least in Nassau County, like, we recently got a notice that um, a new website was formed to help, at least on the child care end. I don't know, like, what other departments within DSS, mm -hmm. but on, in the child care department, I guess, um, we got notice that the what, state now has a website available for parents to see if they can pre-qualify for child care assistance. Oh, that's great. Yeah, because we get questions off. We've also been told we had an official notice sent out to us as child care providers that we are no longer allowed to or we're not allowed to help the parents 
uh, in their process with applying for DSS. They don't want us to call on their behalf or send documents oh, okay. on their behalf. Yeah. They pointed out in the letter that some child care providers take it as far as pretending to be the parent and go down to DSS to apply for them. That's something we would never do, obviously. Yeah. But um, I guess some people are doing that. But it really puts a wrench in th- like some of these parents don't know what to do and if they they qualify for assistance it's it's nice to help why can't we fax something they don't have a fax machine why do they have to spend money to go down to dss to drop off a piece of paper that we can fax directly so I don't to them know if like in terms of facts because i definitely understand there's a lot of fraud that had been happening since we since the pandemic like we'd have people who'd be like oh i'm the broker and blah 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 and they would slip up like my benefits are not there and i'm just like your benefits mm-hmm. not the client who you're calling about you sure you're not using their benefits like so i absolutely understand because there are some people who have committed fraud like even on child care and i don't deal with it directly but there are like some and there was like a provider but i mean it's a home daycare so that one it's a little bit um right tricky because you like are you the family are you not like are you really doing this so I, I absolutely understand. Um, but in terms of like the centers and everything, I'm sorry, I don't know why. There's a lot to go over with you, about you. Gigi had a whole list of questions. So I, I am disappointed that she couldn't make it here today. But I think that with all that there is to learn about you, we can definitely do this again next time with all three of us. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, that would be fun. But I thank you for being my first in-person guest I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> um and we will see you guys oh do you want to share like do you want to be followed on social media i mean i don't really do much on social media i'm not gonna lie. i don't even have my Instagram what about your anymore. tiktok aren't you trying to boost up your tiktok <laughs> i have to um get rid of some storage so i can post my videos i'm 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 not even posting about like child care stuff so if you want to follow me you can but i mean <laughs> do you um, want to share what your tiktok is i have to find what my tiktok is Hold all on. right <laughs> i'll leave her to her information in the description of this um in the video description or the podcast uh description wherever you see the description please like this video if you're watching on youtube or leave a five star rating if you're listening on apple podcasts you can also find this episode on google podcasts spotify wherever you get your podcasts and um that is all you can follow me on instagram at danny christine consulting and on tiktok at danny christine consulting be sure to follow and also subscribe and yeah you can subscribe on apple Podcasts and subscribe on youtube and we will see you in the next video the next episode and Gigi will be back then hopefully yeah. all also, right bye so let me know let me know if you like my voice i'm told i have a very soothing voice i could do like asmr kind of stuff They cannot see the microphone. (laughs) Goodbye, y'all. Great episode. Oh, my God. Look at George. Georgie, say hi to the YouTubes.